Hello everyone, this is Hank. I'm back for another video. Today, um, instead of the usual EOS RP how-to, I'm going to talk about a camera technique called panning. Because you know that when you take pictures of moving object, okay, so you, you are aiming at the object and then as the object moves, you move the camera with it. So that is basically called panning. So most of us, when we're taking pictures, we already do the panning. But today, as the second board, it suggests there. Um, I want to introduce you to a, um, a technique that where you reduce the shutter speed way lower than what you normally do to create the blur in the background to convey motion. And I will show you with some examples. Okay, uh, take these two pictures. Uh, these I took uh, maybe a year and a half ago, uh, up in Death Valley in a place called Star Wars Canyons. Unfortunately, since then they had an accident and they don't go there anymore. So uh, we no lose a um, photographic opportunity. But I was lucky to get these while they were still doing it. So basically, um, on the top picture, right, what I did was to follow the normal uh, formula for action shooting, like fast moving object. This thing is screaming uh, below you in the canyon at 400 miles an hour or so. So I set the shutter speed to 1 2000. Took a picture nicely frozen, um, very sharp. You can see everything. You can actually read the, um, the names of the pilots. Okay, so that's great. Now, then I took this picture at one two hundred of a second instead of one two thousand. Okay, same kind of speed, same, basically same place. Different aircraft, of course. Okay, and then I pan after that. Okay, and today the purpose is I'll show you my technique to do that. Okay, so I was able to freeze the aircraft very nicely. You can still read the the all of the details including a pilot's name. You can see a pilot clearly except that the background is completely blurred, uh, nicely motion blurred. And that is a panning technique that that I want to introduce to you. Okay? Okay, um, I took this picture um, at um, the Miramar Air Show a few years back. Okay, so Blue Angel is taking off. So um, rather than just taking a picture with a high shutter speed, freezing it, and then you cannot tell the difference whether or not the aircraft has just sitting there, or is just taxiing slowly, or is it doing something different? So, uh, so here I think that. I was able to convey the sense of motion that this thing is taking off. Okay, so um, and again, uh, instead of the usual one one thousand, one two thousand shutter speed, I, I took it at one one twenty five. Okay, at the same air show. Uh, there was a propeller aircraft. It wasn't moving as fast as at that, but um, so I also uh, used the panning technique for this. Okay, um, I wonder if you could guess the um, the shutter speed that I was using. Remember, I'm using a 600 millimeter focal length, so. So even the subject is not moving, okay, the, the rule of thumb is that you do one over focal length. So minimum shutter speed just for not shaking is one six hundred of a sec uh, second, correct? Now, and this thing is moving, 
around 100 miles an hour or so. Okay, so, but the panning technique is like, yeah, I use one one hundred of a second shutter speed to capture this. The question would be like, why bother? There's no background to, to blur, right? But for propeller aircraft, normally you, you don't want to freeze the prop because that doesn't convey the motion very well. So most of the action um, picture taker, um, when they take pictures of uh, moving propeller aircraft, uh, the propeller has to be blurred. And that is fairly difficult to do, but it's not impossible, as you can see here. I was able to capture this, and you can read the end registry number easily. You can read just about everything. Uh, detail is intact. So that's the technique. All right? Um, okay, one more uh, example. So... You can even apply this to wildlife, right? Now, um, wildlife is a little bit harder because you could almost never predict where they're going to take off and in what direction. Okay, very erratic, and you don't even know when they're going to take off. So you kind of have to wait for it. And as soon as it takes off, you have maybe half a second to react. It's very quick. So normally you don't see the low shutter speed panning with wildlife. You rarely ever see it. Okay. Um, in this example, I um, I tried that. In some of my pictures, uh, I do have these. And this is one of the example. Okay, so normally what, what you do... Um, is you wait for the bird to take off, and this happened to be a cormorant. Okay, so I was using one sixteen hundred of a second to capture this, and it works out fine. Okay, so now for this particular picture, I decided to do a low shutter speed panning, and I set it to one two hundred. The reason I didn't set it lower because of the unpredictability of the, the birds. So it's really hard. And, and you have very little time. Um, you can't even match the speed because these things are, you know, took off so quick in a, a random direction and, and they are gone. So one, two hundred. But I think that that already kind of convey the motion pretty well, as you can see. Okay, the splash of water when they when they use their feet to push on the water for for you know force take off with um, it's nicely blurred. Now the the water is, is is streaking a lot more than the one on top, as you can see. So so I I'm pretty happy with this picture. Now. Uh, might as well talk about while we're talking about birds, right? Um, even though the movements are very erratic, but in the in this case, when the bird is taking off, um, um, you know, direction is not as erratic as you 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 think, because um, like airplanes, you know, birds take off into the wind, so you got to kind of know that um, that way they have more lift. So easier for them to take off. So, so at least uh, for these two pictures, I kind of know that they're gonna go to the right because the wind happened to coming back from the other direction from from right to left. So, so they're gonna take off to the right. But you know, you still can't really control because sometimes they take off at, at an angle if they want to avoid predator or they avoid something that they don't like. Um, okay, with that, um, I don't think I have any more pictures to show you. Um, so we're going to get into the technique. Okay, obviously, what are the camera settings? I normally shoot in uh, ammo mode, okay? But the idea here is you control the shutter speed. So um, if you want, you can do uh, S or TV mode for Canon. 
as for the rest of the cameras out there. Uh, shutter speed mode or shutter speed priority mode. Okay. And the second bullet, the shutter speed, what shutter speed should I be setting? This is just a general guideline. This is what I use for mine. Okay. It's like I would do one over the speed of the subject. And you don't have to be very precise. For example, um, for a fast moving jet, 400 miles an hour. So 1 400 or slower is going to be pretty good. In my example, I showed you earlier, I use 1 200 uh, or 1 100. But that's just giving me more blur. Um, okay. For a moving bicycle, maybe 1 20th because it's going 20 miles an hour or even 20 kilometer an hour. So you need a slower shutter speed for the same kind of blurring. Now, when you have shutter speed down this low, your ISO is usually not a problem. So ISO 100 is usually the one that you're shooting at. Now, you want to be shooting it at high speed burst to maximize your chance of getting a good picture. Okay, the focus is extremely important that you have to set it to servo mode. If you're using Canon, if you're using Nikon or Sony, you got to set it to AF continuous, AFC. Okay, because you want to to have the camera constantly updating focus for you. All right. Let's talk about the technique here. Um, I have two slides for the technique. The first one is that like when you're shooting this, you cannot tense up. You got to be relaxed, and so you'll be able to match the speed with the subject better. So basically, you you cradle the lens, and normally, sometimes I shoot with a very heavy lens. So I use my left arm and hand to to cradle the the lens where the center of gravity is for the whole camera lens combo. Okay, so that that the camera's not moving and I don't feel any weight except for the the center of gravity. So my left hand and arm is is handling all of the weight. Okay? Tuck my elbows in, resting on the chest so I basically form a human tripod key thing here is to relax and then I take a deep breath and I track the subject by rotating my upper body without low, uh, moving my lower body at all. So basically I twist around the hip okay slowly matching speed and then I press and hold the shutter button while I'm exhaling okay so after I take a deep breath I maybe I hold it a little bit and then I start as I move and as I start tracking and taking pictures, I'm exhaling. And I learned this from from the the target shooting trick that that I learned. I found that I'm a lot more relaxed when I'm exhaling than if I'm holding my breath or I'm taking in a breath. Okay. Your mileage may vary. Okay, so, so here's basically what you should do when you do the panning technique is that you start focusing way before you're taking a picture. So you start tracking it so that you are trying to match the speed and it, it probably will take a fraction of a second for you to adjust the speed. So you just basically you follow it. So you don't want to be waiting until the time that you want to take a picture to be tracking. That would be too late. So you track way ahead of time, and you move with it. And normally you take a picture um, when it's, it is almost perpendicular to you. What what I do is I start shooting like half a second or a second before, and then a second after. And then after I stop, still keep on panning it because you, you want your motion to be fluid. Okay, you don't want... Because if you just slow down or, or you, you stop, your whole process is not going to be uniform. And um, it would be almost impossible to to match the speed if you're not uniform, you're jerky in your motion. So um, that's about it.
and uh, I hope this is of help. Now, this technique requires a lot of practice. And luckily, practicing this is pretty easy. You just go out in the, in the street and you just aim at moving cars. And you do this a few times and you get really good at it. Okay, and I hope um, you enjoy this. If, if you do, please subscribe and like my video. Um, and that kind of make me feel good. I, I don't make any money out of this. I don't have enough audience, but... Um, I'm really enjoying doing it, so I really thank you for this, and uh, have a good day.